Hello, I'm Eric Bobro, and it's my great pleasure to introduce to you another video demonstrating the power and ease of the ARC 5D estimating solution for ARCHICAD. In this 20-minute demonstration, my partner John Hallgarth will demonstrate how you can start a project picking up settings that are already in the AMT plus C5D master template and build it up right on the fly. This is done in metric for international users. We have versions for both US and um, metric based uh, design um, projects. As he works, you'll see how very quickly the estimate takes shape inside ARCHICAD and in Excel. Updates can be made on the fly in either um, platform uh, to affect the estimate. As you develop the project further, the estimates just keep on developing as you add more detail. And he shows an interesting thing with the target-based estimating, how you can literally just put in one or more zones with target costs and get some basic numbers out instantly. But then as you start to put in real detail for the walls and roofs and, and fit out and, and mechanical and etc., you just check a little box. And Excel will then flip over to use the model-based information for the estimate. It's a very, very clever and powerful way to do it. He also demonstrates how you can change some numbers below um, the line where it doesn't directly affect the estimate, but the numbers you change will affect all the components, all the wall types, for example, that use that type of drywall or framing. So you can quickly change based on new costs that come in from the field or from your contractor um, and get everything up to date. It's a very, very powerful syn synergy and synthesis between ARCHICAD and Excel that uh, John pioneered in his ContraBIM 5D estimating workflow. So without further ado, I'd like to um, introduce John Hallgarth, who will demonstrate AMT plus C5D master template in the international metric version. Oh, but one more thing. If you do want to get started and you want more information, please go to archicadestimating.com forward slash solution, where you'll see information about the quantity and cost estimating course, the template that you'll be seeing in a moment, and the implementation coaching program that's designed to help you put this into practice. Take it away, John. Hi everyone, this is John here from ContraBIM and in this video I want to do a quick demonstration of the international metric version of Master Template enabled with the ContraBIM 5D estimating workflow. So you may have seen the US version um, of this video where we uh, previously went through and just kind of pointed out some of the major features and workflows and how to create a new project and start adding uh, content by just eye dropping things from the legend, adding them to the project and then generating an estimate. Uh, we'll do something very similar in this video but I just want to kind of point out some of the major differences and uh, and highlight uh, the power of this solution for international metric users so let's jump right into it so right now we are here in the AMT plus C5D legends international version so uh, let's just start by kind of zooming into some walls here and we can see that these walls have been loaded up with uh, their various components um, for different pricing um, but let's just grab a single wall here and let's point out one of the first things I just want to note is that these are now being priced based off of metric units so um, in the US obviously we're using feet um, cubic yards and so on uh, but now we are set up for uh, meters uh, metric tons and um, yes yeah, so this has now all been converted into the metric system um, same thing with all the associated pricing um, one little tool that i've found very useful as i was going through and just loading generic pricing here is um, is actually this cost estimate international it's like a little calculator here so if i'm used to looking at or receiving pricing in a us dollar imperial version um, i can just use this specify my units and then hit calculate and it's going to automatically calculate this into its metric equivalent so if i change the units here um, it will make the adjustment for us and so it'll quickly just update depending on what unit we are assigning so this has been really useful it's a nice way of just translating from imperial to metric so if you see a, a pricing uh, unit in uh, imperial then just plug it in here enter your units and then uh, it'll automatically convert that for you so okay so in the metric 
the international version here, there's quite a few more additional types of wall assemblies. So we're seeing that here is there's just, you know, a lot more that's been listed out. Everything is really being listed essentially by uh, in millimeters. So stud 90 means a 90 millimeter stud. Um, and uh, yeah, so all the walls have been set up and linked together. Um, one tool that's been really useful for actually um, inputting data for all these either wall or floor assemblies is if we open up the, the finished walls details schedule. Um, we can see here that there's just a lot of information associated with this and we're actually inputting a lot of this using the, uh, the cost property details uh, Excel file that is a exchange that we can export out and we can import back in. So I wanted to point out just real quickly some of the features of this file because this has been really useful in transferring from Imperial into metric. And so if we come down here to the very bottom, we can actually see just as a reference over here what we were including as our uh, unit cost um, for these different systems. Then we have our converted cost and then over in this column here where we're actually applying this above the line um, with a VLOOKUP formula, we actually have our, our plugged in cost. So essentially we're cutting out the, uh, um, the, uh, the cents in this case, and we're just kind of rounding to the dollars. So in this case, if uh, say for example, the tile ceramic, instead of using in this case $54 here, if we find tile ceramic, we can make the adjustment to, I don't know, 58. And just as quickly as we do that, it will update here. We can save this and re-import that back in. So we have the setup for outside finishes, sheathing, framing. So again, if we want to make some updates to our, our framing here, we can just go down and find our associated one. So, you know, for like stud 150, maybe it's 24. And we can just make the update and apply it to anything that gets those values here in, uh, in our project file. So just note if we kind of zoom out and uh, scroll down, there's kind of a few different sections of this worksheet that have been set up for this. So obviously the framing type is all right here and its associated calculations are, are down below. Um, so there's a few different sections here where this is occurring, um, but mainly on the outside finish and the inside finish, those are both referencing the same uh, cells here. So if you need to update this, then just take this column here, copy it, and we can just paste it over on this column. And same thing from down below. If we need to update this, we just copy all of these, and we can just repaste them on top and uh, make the adjustments that way. So um, kind of gives you some additional features for plugging things in in Imperial, seeing what the associated calculation was, and then just rounding it to uh, the value that, that you want to carry and use. So um, anytime we're done with this, we just hit file, save, and we can come back to our details worksheet here. And we just go to import property values into elements. And I'll go and find in my legends here, the property details and date modified. We just save that. So we can open this up, run this through and just import. And so we can update our values in all of our walls at once using this method. So pretty powerful stuff. Um, okay, so let's go back here to the uh, visual favorites. So of course, we have all the kitchen parts, we have different accessories, we have stairs and railings that have all been set up. The quick rooms, um, we're still in the process of loading these up, I need to do this in the next few days here. So right now, instead of eye dropping from these values, or sorry, from those elements, just I drop from the source elements over here in their uh, kind of broken out container of parts because here you can see what value is associated as well as the coding. And so it's a little better location to I drop from anyway. Um, but certainly the slabs, roofs, all of this has been loaded up. Uh, floor finishes, um, structural members up here, everything has been loaded. Doors, windows, it's all set up. So, um, okay, so let's go ahead and jump over now to the a new project file. So, um, so this is actually, it's in, untitled still because I just opened this up. This is what you'll see the first time you open the uh, AMT plus C5D international TPL file, the template file. And so um, just like the US version, this also contains a example uh, house project. 
Um, and so when you're starting a new project, what you most likely want to do is just, uh, let's just start by, we can delete. Um, and of course, in this case, we need to unlock again, layers, unlock layer. Let's delete everything associated with this. I'm also going to delete some of these uh, just labels to get them out of the way. And then, um, yeah, let's go to a view that we can then start doing some quick little modeling on so we can see how this workflow is set up. So um, let's go to a floor plan. So obviously with the international, instead of first floor being the you know ground level as it is in the US, Obviously, that's one of the big differences of the international is now we have a ground floor plan instead of a first floor plan. So let's just navigate here. And also another place I want to navigate is let's just go to uh, the legends and the 2D legends. And sometimes I feel like instead of using the, the we can certainly go here in the, uh, the legends to these different views. But sometimes I think it's just easier to go to the actual view that has all of them. So that way it's not a trace reference and it's, it functions a little bit uh, quicker, I've noticed. Um, so let's just uh, come in here and let's just grab some different wall types. So we'll just grab like a plaster wall type with, you know, a stud, interior gypsum, uh, wall board. Um, and so we can just take this and just like we did in the international, or sorry, in the U.S. version. Um, we can just come back here. Actually, I'm going to pick up a few things. I'm going to eye drop a few things in. So we got a wall type. Um, let's pick up a, we can just grab a window type so that we're loading in windows. We can load in a door. Um, we can pick up a, say like a curtain wall. Maybe we'll just make this more of a, uh, an office type building or more of a commercial building versus residential. Um, we can just pick up a roofing type. Oh, uh, well, let's go for something larger, stud cavity. Okay, so did we have a few kind of just early uh, elements that have been picked up and I dropped in here. Um, so we can now just go to our plans. Let's go to a floor plan, ground floor. And I'm going to turn off the trace reference. And okay, so let's just take a wall and um, let's just draw in kind of a boundary here. Oop, I'm going to undo that. Let's just get this tool. Um, and we'll just make kind of a little commercial building. So there we go. Um, I'm going to pick up the curtain wall tool and just continue this along. So I might want to make some quick adjustments there in terms of how I'm drawing this. There we go. That looks a little better. So from there to there. So of course I can clean up those little details there at the end. That's no problem. You can do that right now just by grabbing this and moving it over. Okay, so now we have some walls, some curtain walls. Um, we can toss a, uh, a roof on this real quick. Let's just uh, grab a roof and, oh, that's going to want to make it interesting. Let's just unlock the layer. We'll just add our line and then let's just throw a bit of a roof on it and add a few offsets here and there. Probably should offset all the edges equally. So we'll just go a one and a half meter offset. Okay. And of course I'm drawing this probably on the wrong story, but that's okay. So we can add that in. We can give it, I don't know, a little bit of slope. Percent slope, let's do a 5%. And okay, of course I could adjust these walls or these up and that would certainly need to be trimmed but um, obviously there's some detailing that would take place on this file um, and I don't really want to spend too much time modeling this I just want to show those qualities coming through so let's uh, we'll kind of quit right there for the modeling aspect of it um, one other thing that maybe we want to add in is let's grab a slab 
So let's go back to the legends. Let's throw a little slab on there. So our slabs in this case, let's just grab a 150 millimeter slab. Um, we can go back to our ground floor. There's our little building and we can just pull this across there. Who knows, maybe we wanna just even add, I don't know, a three meter little pad out there. So, okay, so there we go. This needs to be adjusted up. I don't know why it's set down below, that's okay. Um, all right, so we have these. Uh, let's go ahead and start looking at some of these quantities now. So, um, so in the international version, just like the U.S., we now have a new folder here called C5D estimate. Um, so there's a little bit of a user guide here, just in terms of setting up uh, this with Excel for the first time. But we'll talk about that a little bit more here as, as when we go through the demonstration. But let's just go and let's see our concrete. So there's our slab, uh, sixty dollars per square meter in this case. Um, we also have our rebar for that slab, um, 40 kilograms per unit. So obviously we're translating this to metric now. Um, we can go down and pull up our rough carpentry. So we'll take a quick look at this one. This is a component-based schedule, so it should actually be breaking out our framing as well as the plywood associated with that wall. Okay, so there we go. Let's just click on this to do our zoom. So, okay, so yeah, we have our um, roof rafters um, and then our plywood. And in this case, the insulation mineral soft is actually the cavity that that framing member is being drawn in. And if we come over here, we can see that that's a stud 150. So, um, and plywood uh, 10 millimeter. So, um, okay, so we got those coming through. Let's go check out our storefront and curtain wall so we can see that here we have almost 72 meters so um okay so we got a few things that are calculating already let's uh let's go and create a new estimate so the way that we start this is just like in the international or sorry just like in the u.s version uh, we can take this folder which contains the base template this time it's tagged with international because it's in metric um and all the cost reports default cost reports Let's take this and we can just create a copy of this. And so once that is copied, we can go in here and we'll just rename this to be INT estimate is fine. We can go back one folder, we can rename this to demo estimate one. And okay, so to set this up with our publisher in our project, we just need to go to our new publisher called C5D Estimate. And on the top folder here, we just need to go to our publishing properties and we need to browse for that brand new file path that we had just created by copying that folder. So I'm navigating to ARC5D, International, Estimate, Demo Estimate 1, and I wanna to publish to this folder, not this folder, because we wanna create this folder within there because we're creating a real folder structure. So select that folder hit OK. I'm also going to just grab those one, two, uh, rough carpentry, storefront, um, roof tiles and coverings. I'm just going to grab all those and just hit publish. So we'll let that run. And while that's running, let's go and open up our international estimate Excel template. There we go. So we need to, first time opening this file, we need to enable the macros so that we can go in and browse. And so did that finish? Looks like it did. So we can just go back, browse, and we'll find that folder. So the estimate, our demo estimate one, and we'll grab our cost reports folder. So there we go. And so now that we've created that link, we can go to any of these sheets that we know that we just published data on. And right now there's there's nothing here, but if we just hit refresh, we can see that cost coming through just as easy as that. So 
There we are. We have our, oh, let's just refresh. Okay, so there we have our different, uh, different framing members. I actually had copied in the image that I was using when I was working on this to kind of check which materials were associated with this one. So it's something I'll probably go back and clean up a little bit. Um, we had, I think we had some roofing here. So let's refresh. So we actually had some roofing from before. Let's clear this and then refresh. There we go. Um, that value right there, $25 per meter. That might actually be a little low. So if we wanted to make an update here, we would just come back in. Let's, we can go to roof tiles and coverings. I feel like that value should be more like, well, this is a perfect opportunity to do this. Let's go in, highlight it. So say if this was, I don't know, $8 per square foot. What is that a metric? Well, there we go. I calculated it for me. And so quickly we can just make that update and publish. And as soon as we do that, come back over, refresh. Maybe it wasn't done. Did I publish the right one? Roof tiles and coverings, publish. Okay, I think I jumped the gun there a little bit. Okay, so that we can see updated. Um, so yeah, you can see how easy this is to just, you know, I drop things and start modeling. Um, so we can see these starting to trickle into our report here. If we wanted to carry those in the total, we would just add an X right here so that our total column here is starting to reference those uh, reports that we had just uh, brought through. Um, if we wanted to set up our target based estimate, it would just it'd be as, just as easy as going and um, we can turn on our legends just as a trace reference real quick, show as a trace. And we have a zone right here that's set up ready to do our target based estimating. So here we can just go to, did I pick that up? I thought I did. Pick up the zone. This is why sometimes I don't like working with this as a trace reference, but come on, pick it up. There we go. So turn that off. There we go. Okay. Um, and then, yeah, well, now we can just add that zone in. In this case, because it's a gross square footage, I'm actually going to delete this and we're going to use a different method. So I'm going to create a square and I'm just going to the outside because that's what gross square footage typically represents is the outside area. So let's just click that. Now that we have this loaded in, if we go to our gross square footage cost report, we should see just those default values that came through and we can publish this. And of course, we there's also a uh, Excel data exchange for this um, this file as well in the uh, the details folder in the legend. So we can reuse that on this in this case. But um, let's go back here. Let's just go to our gross square meter this time. Um, just refresh. So there we go. So now we've established all of our target based estimates and we can just kind of compare now between our model based and our target based as we go through and uh, complete the modeling of our project. So, okay, so that's it really in a nutshell how to set up a new project. You just open up the TPL. We have to uh, kind of reconnect things just by uh, specifying the publishing paths, um, but pretty easy to just grab things and go. So really the first step as a new uh, user to this international version would be to go through and um, just understand what's in the legends file. Maybe go through and make some quick modifications to the unit cost to represent your own regional unit costs. Um, but then you can just take this, link it into a new template file and get started right away. So um, hopefully you enjoyed this video and learned a little something about how we can use master template and the ContraBIM 5D estimating workflow um, in harmony, uh, not just only in Imperial, but also in metric. And uh, yeah, I'm really excited to be working with Eric Bobro on this and uh, uh, producing this joint template. So 
Um, stay tuned for more videos. If you uh, are interested in purchasing this template, it's actually on sale this week. Um, so go to archicadestimating.com slash solution. And there's a lot more details there about the template as well as uh, other bundles with some training programs and coaching programs, which will give you a better background into how all this is set up so you can take it, run with it, and manipulate it to fit your own business operations as you see fit. So uh, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on another video.